Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and here we are in the new patio space. It has come a long way. We're still not done yet, but we are making great progress. So we thought it would be fun to just kind of show you what we've been up to, progress that has been made, really excited with how it's coming. Lots of things have been going on. So let's just start kind of with the basics. So if you will remember, this has been an ongoing project of ours, gosh, for over a year. We used to have an above ground pool here. This whole, like I would be in the middle of the pool right now. We had a deck that surrounded the whole pool. Um, so it felt like kind of like an in-ground pool. And we ripped that out over, it was like in November of, I guess, 19. So <laughs> it's been a long project. Um, we wanted to create an outdoor living space. People were asking, you know, well, why were you, why'd you tear out the pool? Our kids weren't using it quite as much. It was starting to show some wear and tear. We were basically gonna have to replace the whole thing. And we said, you know what? We think we would rather get, um, we would get more enjoyment rather out of the patio space area that our family can come and enjoy. And at some point, if we decide to put in another pool, well, then that's fine. But we think that this would be more enjoyable for all of the family and friends and entertaining and all sorts of stuff. So when Jerry and I do projects, we kind of have the master plan in mind, but we're not afraid to tweak it as we go. Um, so we're not those set in stone. It has to be absolutely this way. We knew going in that we wanted to have the flower beds because I wanted to have these flower beds on each side of the patio. They're four feet wide and just run the length. Uh, this is the back of our garage. Um, so they're here. Now you will notice, let's just go ahead and talk about this bed. Again, we've been here many times before, um, but it's filled with just great garden soil. Um, it's against the foundation of our house. It's brick. When we built the house, this was kind of the grade, the natural grade. So we don't have to worry about any kind of rot or anything. This is a solid brick foundation, so we're good. We have in here the sprinter boxwoods, two sprinter boxwoods from Proven Winters. We have the new upright gardenias from Southern Living which I'm really excited about this. They did great when we put them in. These are more upright columnar than they are wide and spreading. And they also did almost like a rose hip. I don't know if you can see in here, but they did a little hip this fall and they were this gorgeous orange color. I did not know that gardenias did that. It did it, great. We have our tulips. So. These are going to be the pink tulips in the back or the white ones are starting to come up. The pinks are going to be the earliest. The whites are going to be later. I did not time that right. Oh, well, we'll do better next time. And then, of course, <laughs> the black tubs, like the black pots, the holes, that is where my David Austin roses are going to go. So I went ahead and held the spot for them. We have irrigation already in here, so it's ready to go. So as soon as those David Austins come sometime this month, then we'll be able to get them in there. Then over here on this side, of course, we have our back porch. Again, another four foot wide. Same tulips in here. Sprinter boxwoods are in here. The gardenia is in here. Um, and then this is the new white shishi camellia from Southern Living. There are three of those in here. Just a gorgeous, bloom on it pure white these are sasanquas so they bloom in the fall just and they'll be wider than they are tall um, so i will fill this whole area up with lots of cool colors whites and pinks um, but here we have the floor we have <laughs> this has been a labor of love if you'll remember we've talked about this before josh and roman came and helped us get started we decided to do it on a diagonal roman said it will look so much better on the diagonal so that's what we did they came in and did gosh i don't know like two courses two or three courses and then jerry and i have finished it all for the rest now anywhere you see like gravel dirt showing that's where we have to do custom cut pieces the, the whole pieces are laid, and so we have spent, Jerry and I have spent the last two Sunday afternoons doing all the little cuts on the end. So we've gotten, like this whole wall is done, then we've got the edge is done. Now I want you to come over here, so next to our column, um, <laughs> you want to talk about a, huh, look at this piece right here. Can you see this piece with my foot? 
This is the piece about did Jerry in last week. This is one piece because it has these cuts. Now, this is not a perfect cut. We're not going to be going into like masonry anytime soon. This is a project for us. Jerry did an amazing job. I'm very proud of him. So we have, we did today a little bit around the fire pit again, because the fire pit obviously is round. It can cause for some interesting cuts. We're getting there, um, but it's just kind of a slow, tedious process, but it's coming and it looks so nice to see it all put together. Now, of course, North Carolina in the winter, we have lots of rain. So we're trying to get this done as fast as we can because every time we get big rain, some of the pieces will move a little bit. So then we have to kind of pull them back up and add some of that pine, uh, the fines to it to make them level. Once everything's in and they're all tamped down, they're ready to go, then we can put that locking sand in and that's what holds it in place um, and they won't move. So that will be coming. I know I showed you the Weston urns from Unique Stone. These are going to be late tulips, so they have not poked their little heads up yet, but I know they're in there growing, so I'm not worried about that. And then this is like so exciting because if you will notice, one, the deck is done. So Poppy came through for us and did it. Um, Jerry, I'm gonna let you come up right here and I'm gonna run around. So, you show them the deck. I'm gonna come around here because I'm so excited about this. So we did go with the treks. Um, right now, it looks like a hot mess because my daddy was in here. The boxes are in. Can you see that these boxes, these are gonna be filled with annuals. So excited. So I think this, this section is like, 12 feet long. This section is maybe like eight feet. I'll get the exact dimensions and tell you later. Um, but so with my daddy, he is a, a woodworker, like a professional woodworker. And I was like, daddy, just, this is my idea. You just make it look good. That's all I care about. So we went ahead. They're kind of deep, which is you need that right for your annuals. So they have lots of room for your roots to grow on the inside is 18 inches. So we have an 18 inch span, of course. So he made the frame from um, pressure treated lumber so it won't rot. And then he just has the facade is the Trex. So it all blends together. Yes, there are drainage holes in here. He did like a one inch bit and we have drainage holes, I think like every foot in all directions. So it will drain really well. Of course, this gets that hot, hot sun all day long. So I cannot wait until the weather cooperates, we get past our last frost date, and I can get these planted. It is going to be absolutely stunning. I have ideas of what I'm gonna plant in here, but it's not set in stone yet. Um, so of course, I will bring you on that whole journey of planting these gorgeous boxes. Um, he did use, of course, the treks as the facade. The top pieces, though, the, the caps are lumber because you can't really he wanted to route it and soften the edges and round the edges and da 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 da. It's hard to do that with the treks. So this is why we have all the pine shavings, the wood shavings right here because that's what he was doing there. So I'm going to pop down real quick and not step on my tulips that are coming up right here. Um, and then of course, remember in this bed right here, this is a depth of 47 inches. We measured it. We have a massive unique stone. Um, it is the Asian water bowl that is going to go right here in the center. We're going to turn it into a fountain. So we'll raise it up. Of course, we'll bring you along for that whole process. But just know we will have a water feature right here. We'll have a David Austin Rose right here. We'll have a David Austin Rose right here. Cannot wait. So excited. So this is just kind of an update of what's going on. Of course, we do have to finish out right here. Um, this part, obviously, we can put whole pieces of the pavers down. But with daddy working, we didn't want to get in his way. We had plenty of other stuff to do. Um, and then these will be the steps that just go out into the yard. Um, we do have landscape lighting that still has to go on. It is here. That's what the wires are. If you saw wires sticking out, we'll have the landscape lighting within underneath the lips. Whole nine yards. Um, I do want to show you one more thing. So come over here real quick. This is really fun. So right here, now this is not gonna stay here. 
So don't give me comments about how this doesn't look good right here. I know it doesn't. So right here, remember we have, I call it the Rose of Christine. It's really a Rose of Sharon. It's the white chiffon from Proven Winners. But Christine gave it to me, so now it's the Rose of Christine. So she's going to be here and gorgeous. But Jerry found from one of our wholesale nurseries, this is the blue chiffon. So this is white, this is blue. This is a standard form of a Rose of Sharon. So that tree form, is this not the cutest thing ever? So I'm, what I'm gonna do is take this and I'm gonna plant it in this Michael Carr pot. This is one of his, it's not an aqua pot, it's just one of his traditional planters. This is the full volcanic in plum, just a beautiful pot, has greens and purples and grays and a little bit of blue in there. So what I will do is plant this sweet Rose of Sharon in here and then I will put annuals in the bottom around it, all around, and it will look gorgeous. I have it it's sitting right here because it's completely out of the way. So this area is not being used, it's not in construction, so it's just out of the way so it can just hang out here until we get the rest of the areas done and I know where I want to put it because I still don't know where I'm going to put it yet. Um, you know, really big gardening problems around here. But anyway, I hope that you found this interesting. I hope you are, I know that some of you, a lot of you have followed this journey from like day one when it was just, whew, it was a mess. It still is a mess in some areas, but we're getting there. And so that is, that's the goal, right? Slow and steady wins the race. So we are getting there slowly but surely. Cannot wait to start using this space. Um, so anyway, that's it for today. As always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. We'll see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day. Bye, friends.